For large changes, um, it's recommended that you uh, test those changes in uh, a sandbox environment versus um, making those changes directly in production. So let's create the uh, sandbox environment. So in order to do that, uh, you go to setup. Inside here, you type in sandbox, click on here, and this will show you what sandboxes are available. Uh, partial sandboxes uh, for certain data sets give you uh, almost the same copy of production. These developer pros and developers um, just give you metadata only, not the data that's in production. So, um, first step is um, at least for the partial uh, copy, you will need uh, a template. So, let's create a new template. Uh, templates define what uh, data you want uh, in the copy or the uh, partial sandbox. So let's call this default template. And uh, let's basically select everything. So it, it will basically select all of the objects um, to copy. Okay, so now uh, that we've created a template, uh, we can go ahead and say we, we have one available. Uh, full sandboxes are pretty much full production, but since we, we have a small data set, partial copy would be fine. So we create a new sandbox. Uh, let's call this, um, call this partial. And we create it from production. You see that one's available. You see the partial sandbox where we can refresh every five days. Um, five gigs of data, which is more than enough for us. Dev pros and dev, you can you know, do it every day. So let's do next. And then we pick our template, the default template that we just created. So this will basically take all the objects and we say create then so now it's in the queue for Salesforce to um, start to spin up the partial copy sandbox and so this this may take um, this may take uh, a couple of hours hit refresh you can see that Salesforce is uh, going through the process of creating the sandbox. Okay, so about 50 minutes later, um, this sandbox has been created. Um, you'll see um, options, and again, we're in the production environment. You see options to you know clone this, um, which you likely can't because this is a, you only have one partial, and then uh, you can log into it. Um, since this is the first time around, um, uh, you won't see an activate um, because this is the first sandbox that you've created. Uh, if you try to create another partial sandbox again, if you if you, um, after we log in and, and activate it um, and use it, and if we try to do another uh, partial sandbox again, uh, once it's completed, you'll see something uh, a link here to activate it. Because basically, Salesforce doesn't want to wipe out a current sandbox if you're not ready. So you have to actually go through that activate step, unless um, unless you uh, set it to auto activate when you um, when you create that sandbox. So um, we're in the production environment, and uh, we want to log in to that um, uh, test uh, partial sandbox uh, environment. So we click on login. And um, for the most part, um, you can go to sandbox environments using https test.login.com versus login.salesforce.com. But uh, since that login link it gave us to the actual you know, sandbox link, 
um, and you use the same uh, password as your production password uh, during the initial creation and you see that um, Salesforce uh, appends the name of the sandbox to the end of your username right so this was my production username with the IE and then it uh, it appended the dot partial to the end so that's the your username uh, one thing and, and on top it's either the, the sandbox URL or it'll say uh, test.salesforce.com so I'll enter in the same password as, as production so Verification code. Click on verify. So now we are in the um, sandbox environment, which is um, almost a full um, replica since it's, uh, you have a small data set. Uh, it's a almost a full replica of production. So you can, s for example, if you look at some of the data, look at all organizations, you'll see that all the data is there. Contacts, uh, say all contacts, and again, you'll see that all the data is there um, that you have uh, from production. So this is um, a great place for us to uh, try out our changes uh, versus uh, you know, having them adversely affect production. So the other thing uh, to note is, that, you know, if, if you look at all your users, uh, you'll see that, um, again, similar to my username, it has the dot partial. Yours would be the dot partial. The other thing you notice is that Salesforce also what they call uh, off. Um, not for mines uh, because I'm the I was the one that um, did the um, did the uh, sandbox refresh. But if you take a look at yours, you see that Salesforce uh, obfuscates or changes the email address um, in the sandbox process. Um, you will have to go in and, and change that in the sandbox environments. But the main reason why it's done is because um, imagine that we had like you know, thousands of users in this list, in not only uh, not only um, from your organization but also customers. Um, you don't want to be sending emails to them in this environment. Um, uh, so that's that's one of the reasons why we um, Salesforce changes that um, all these all these emails so that. Uh, in a sandbox environment, in a test environment, uh, there aren't emails and things that are um, notifications and things that are sent to to all these users. All right, so um, that is it for creating a sandbox. So now we have a fully functioning uh, pre-production environment where we can make our changes.